Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Um, can you share your full name and where we are here today? Okay, I'm Caroline Jula and we're in Droiva, which is near Crosswell, North Hill and Groyce. Um, it's sort of on the foot of the mountains of the Fuselis. We've got a, a road that goes right out into the moor just outside our house. Mm -hmm. So it's a very, very isolated, well, quite an isolated property mm -hmm. in terms of mm, this area. Yes. <laughs> actually. Yes, well, it's, you're along a, yeah, it's a single track it's lane. A single track lane. Yeah, it's mm. about a, it's it's. I think it's about a mile from us to the main road, or it might be slightly less. Mm. And okay. just past here now, you're basically just out to the mountain, so That's it doesn't right. go any further, does it? Um, no, it it doesn't. But funnily enough, or not funnily enough, there are mm. one, two, three, four houses beyond us. Really, also out on the mountain, so even further than us. So the lane continues then. It does. Yes. Mm. Yeah. Mm. And how long have you lived here for, Caroline? I've lived here since the 16th of October 1999, which is the date I've engraved on my mind, obviously. Wow. Wow. <laughs> um, before that, my partner Kit and I were renting a house called Nayad, which is um, a couple of miles away by, well, it's less than that by road. It's actually just across the, the moor here, mm. um, belonging to Enid Cole at that time. Oh, yes. And um, so we were looking for somewhere to live in this part of Wales because my partner Kit had come here a lot as a child and really loved it. Um, I actually came here once when I was 16 because I've got some photographs of me up at the top of um, Laurel Combe Cadwyn really? by the, the Theodolite stand or whatever it is up there. Um, but that was, it's Kit's really, it was Kit's connection with the area that really brought us here. Um, yeah, yeah. And we were looking for somewhere and very luckily Droiva came up. Actually at the time I was in Romania, I was traveling in Romania and um, I got this message from Kit to say he'd found this house <laughs> and I arrived back. Yes. I drove myself home from Romania and I arrived over at Nayad at three o'clock in the morning on this day, yes. the first day in the area. And we came to see the house at 12 o'clock the next day <laughs> here, yes. put in an offer and very luckily it was accepted. It hadn't Fantastic. even been advertised as that. So we were very, very lucky yes. to get it indeed. Yeah. And uh, keep feeling that. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Yeah. So that's so. How long is that now? So that was, was nineteen ninety nine. So twenty two, twenty three years. Yes. Yeah, so a long, years. long time. It then. is. It is a long time. Yeah. But as you were saying earlier about people who've been here a lot longer than us, but but came from somewhere else, we don't really feel we're local. No, yet. but no, but do you do you feel that now? Um, in some ways, yes, and that's a lot to do with taking part in what's happening in the village halls around mm. about and certain people have made us feel incredibly welcome which has really helped but also getting involved with things has made us both feel more grounded here I think which I think mm. is fairly natural. So what was what's so different here to maybe where you, you both were before? Um, well immediately before moving here um, Kit and I had a narrowboat on, on canals in England for a couple of years but, wow. but I, I at that time had a flat in London where I'd been for 10 years um, I, but I was born and grew up in Oxfordshire so the, the country village aspect of things feels fairly familiar to me coming mm -hmm. here and Kit himself grew up in a village in um, not far from Wolverhampton which became part of the Wolverhampton overflow so it was very much invaded by new housing when he was growing up but he yes. both of us had this feeling for the countryside going way back but we both lived in cities um, and I wasn't at all happy in London. I never settled there. I always felt it was I mean, as exciting as it is, and it certainly is exciting and stimulating and all yes. of that. I just felt I could not find my feet there at all. It wasn't the pace of life for you? No, no. I mean, it was. sometimes it's really great to have that, and I, and I won't decry it at all, because no. you know, I think it's a very good thing to have yeah. to experience different places, and I've yeah. been lucky enough to travel a few places in my life, and I love doing that, but... But being here, um, I think particularly during and after COVID, I've certainly realised what an incredibly great community this is. I'm just not just saying that because I'm talking to you, Sophie, but... <laughs> it, yeah, don't hold back, Caroline. It is, actually. <laughs> <laughs> no, it really is, because when I was growing up in Oxfordshire, my, my dad was a GP in the village where I was born. And in the I was born in 1954, and at that time, you know, if... There was this thing that my parents didn't want me to pick up a village accent, so I wasn't allowed to go to the village school. So I didn't have any friends in the village. Yes. We also lived in quite a big house with a big garden with a wall around it, so I never got to play with the local kids. Yeah. Or if I did, I was 
felt very naughty. Mm. <laughs> so um, the sort of socialising aspect of it was, was different. But here, I really do feel, in a lot of ways, that I sort of made up that for that short from for that short made up that short for is that is that grammatical I'm not sure no I understand in, in a saying. way you know I yeah. mean there are lots of other things going on here about being English in the Welsh community and all of that which we've discussed a lot and mm. try to understand that myself but I think you get that wherever you move in the world if you if you're coming from the outside into a community that's existed for a lot longer than you've been there mm. you're bound to find difficulties but it's it's all in the God. I'm really <laughs> running away with myself here. No, but it's, but it's, it's really interesting, though, isn't it? Well, it is very interesting. Yes, because I mean, I, I remember the first, almost the first week we were here. Janet, who's married to Dilwyn, who lives down the road yes. in Helignant, she came round to see if we were okay. They were actually keeping some sheep here in the garden at the time. They asked if they could stay, and we said yes, sure. Um, and she was so kind and friendly which it made a huge impression on me and then Sarah next door Sarah Morley next door mm. the same thing and and those one or two people who made a real effort to to, to welcome us mm. really made a difference and, and also Owen Owen Evans from from um, Pensarn at that time yes. Owen Rossoir, she's the same mm. I've always felt Oh, yes. I really like yes. Owen actually yes. she's a great person I think um, and Owen has obviously has been here pretty much all her life exactly you know? yes uh, exactly. so yeah. you know yeah. I'm sure she feels you know that that is her role is to welcome people in some in some way oh yeah? Sophie yeah I mean I think she does but I, I, I when I was interviewing her from the film I've yes. been making about the village four and the history of it yes. and everything she I kind of I wanted her to say to me if she possibly could express it yes how she feels about people coming in you know who don't perhaps necessarily understand about the Welsh and I, I don't know if, if I pushed her too far or what but she gave me a very very strong reaction in Welsh about people coming here don't believe that there is a culture here mm. there are some people who come here who assume it's just like England yes yes and that is wrong. Mm. And um, I don't know. I can see. I mean, she she obviously feels quite passionately about it, and probably quite hurt about it in some ways. But the way she expressed it to me was so clear. Yes. Um, yes. I really wish I could sort of. Um, I mean, I have got the recording, and I will use yeah. it. But yes. Because but it, it was a, it was very clear to you, and it was it, yeah. Yeah. She and didn't it was yes, absolutely concise. that. You know, she wasn't telling me off or anything, but no. but she was just saying we have our culture. Yes. You know, people who come here who think there's nothing here. It's like mm. almost like the Americans invading the states in a way. You know that. So, what was the area like then? Obviously, you know, going back now, um, what is it? How, what did we say? Twenty three, yeah. twenty four years or so. Yes. Yeah. Um, the area has changed an incredible amount in that time. I'm sure. Um, you know, what 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 stands out for you, Caroline? <laughs> you know, what, what stands out as so you were different. Yeah, I, I really I hope I can think of something because it's, I don't know if I'm getting a sort of brain fog or something, but, but what is different? Well, we, could, we used to have milk delivered at the beginning. Um, Doris used to come around. I know Doris, yes. I mean, now we're getting yes. it delivered again, but that is a huge difference because there was a long time when you couldn't get anything delivered. And, no. and now it's happening again, which is like the circle's going back. Yes. But but Doris, another person who I, I felt knew a hell of a lot and was incredibly intelligent and yes. and welcoming and, and, and understood just so much about living here, I think. Uh, what's changed about living here? I, oh, so when you know. came here, Caroline, did yeah. you, you're talking about our when and, um, yeah. and kind of the being obviously a Welsh area um, yes. of Wales, um, did you have that impression um, very clearly when you arrived here was that clear to you it was ex yes but I'm, and I think that was partly heightened because I'd spent I've been spending quite a bit of time in Romania yes. and learning the language there and, and 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 spending a lot of time with Romanian anthropologists as well and and getting that kind of take on things visiting vi village museums mm -hmm. and interviewing people over there and being interested in their history and culture and I kind of was really fascinated by that and I wanted to do the same thing here mm. and I did start learning Welsh quite early on but it was obviously it's not Romania <laughs> you know it's, it's, it's mm. different but 
I, I, I wanted to be, I mean, I, I wanted to get to know as much about the culture as I, as I could, mm -hmm. as is possible to get. But then we also had to earn a living and things started to sort of dissolve and get a bit foggy and, you know, it's not It's difficult, isn't it? It's mm -hmm. not, it's not easy. And I suppose mm -hmm. this area being, uh, maybe different to Romania, whereas if you learn Romanian there, it would be that more immersive experience. Exactly, yes. Um, yeah. Here, because it has been a, a bilingual area for such a long time, that immersion pops mm. do, doesn't exist as clearly now in no. some aspects of the community. No, exactly. No, I mean, it's, and, and of course, as an English person in what is sometimes called an English colony, which mm. isn't, but, you mm. know, there's all of that going on, and I was aware of that and feeling that, oh, well, perhaps I might not be that welcome, and what am I really doing here? And, and um, you've got to be very careful, and then also feeling, but hell, you know, I do live here, and this is my place. So well, you yes, if you felt like you belonged here, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And do you feel that here? Do you feel like you belong here? In lots of ways I do, and in some ways I, I don't, and, and never will. I think part of that is because I haven't got children, and I haven't had children bringing up children here, which I think mm. probably makes a huge difference if you have, going to schools and children getting to know each other and all of that. But um, I still miss where I was born. I went back there for the first time last year um, to Chalbury in Oxfordshire um, because my sister still lives there and she's mm. not very well. And I spent a, lo a lot of li my life not wanting to go back there. I did go back and I found, suddenly felt this whoosh of this is where I belong. Really? So there's that as well. But I, I, there's an awful lot here that I really love and feel very good about. And, yeah. it, you know, we've made our sort of place here. You know, we've yeah. kind of moved around and, yeah. you, know, you know, we've kind of shifted. You know, I'm trying to say you can't see it on an audio, but no, um, no, no. It's, it's almost as you're saying earlier, like an animal sort of making its home. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. that is, is that. Yes, you've, you've made your little burrow, your yeah, nest. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely. Yes, you know? yeah. And we found some great people, you know, wonderful people who I really really love and would, would yeah. prize anywhere that I was mm. I've been mm. very lucky in that respect but it's interesting to explore that connection isn't it between somewhere that you were born and that you grew up in and yeah you know it, and that that everlasting it's connection to yeah, a place yeah you it know? is because that's where I played and you know rode my pony and ran around and probably trespassed in people's orchards and things like that so a lot of that fell you know the, the sort of intervening years fell away and there I was yes like a kid again I suppose in a way and did you had your family lived in that area for a, a long time no no no, no my not I mean my parents moved there in 1948 I think so I was born in 54 and where, where did their family my my dad was a Londoner yeah. and my mum had, had, had was born in born in Cheltenham yes and then grew up in Devon and, and Ireland in the west of Ireland yeah and then came back and because she joined joined the Wrens in the war Mm. That brought her to London and then Scotland. Well, she met my dad in Scotland because they were both in the navy. And the rest is history. No, they <laughs> but it, no, but it, it it is fascinating, isn't it? Because you, um, where do roots begin to yes. a place? You yeah. know. So what's it like yeah. to live in this area today? You know what, <laughs> what what are the things that go on often? Perhaps um, perhaps where do you where do you do your food shop? Do you do you, you know, do you support local? What's what's the yes? And um, we try to support local as much as we can. We've got into a very funny situation because when Dylan Roberts started doing milk deliveries, I wanted to support him so enthusiastically, water to him into his milk, and then we discovered somebody in her in Hermon is doing the same thing. <laughs> so we were having two lots of milk from two separate farms. <laughs> so we were able to drink it all. Crazy, no. <laughs> But yeah, yeah, I definitely want to support local. I mean, I, I go to Cleveland's in, in um, St. Godmell's whenever mm. we can. And um, we buy, we usually, we still eat meat. Oh dear, we still eat meat. Um, so we go to Ken's in, in um, well, it, it's now Ben's Butchers and Criminals. Yes. So yeah, and um, otherwise, and during COVID, because my partner Kit had to shield because of his health, mm. um, he was allowed to have a delivery from Asda once a week and that's still going on so we're getting some of our deliveries from there mm. and otherwise we mostly do our food shopping in Cardigan yes um, sometimes at the supermarkets but 
Yeah, we you know try not to because we don't really like them. <laughs> no, no. Well, I, over your time here, then um, yeah. has you were saying that there's more options now to have have yes. obviously food delivered here, which may, it, wait, would have been the norm years ago, I exactly. imagine. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. Um, so what has that changed a lot since you've been here? Um, it's changed quite a bit. Yes. I mean, actually, Kit's very good because he makes our bread when he when he's got the energy to do it. Mm. So we do, and we get flour from actually we get it from England because he's got a. He gets organic flour from Shipton under which would. Okay. Well, a lot of people I think use that. I think they do. Can, they? Yes, yeah. I yeah. think they do. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, so there's that, and we and we started growing a little bit of our own veg, which yes. we're still doing. We've got a polytunnel to do that. And mm. Kit's great at that, and we don't have chickens or anything, sort of. On, we don't have livestock, but but yeah, um, it's it's changed. Thank goodness, it's changed that you can buy more, buy more food locally, yeah. And um, When you came here, was that less of a choice? Yes, yes it was, yeah. We were doing more shopping in... In, um, in Cardigan in and Tesco and so on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's, that is, well, that's a, that's a big change, actually, in it terms is. of, of, of uh, how many local producers there, there may be, smaller scale, Yes, again. yes, exactly, and, and eggs, of I mean, eggs, I think, have always been fairly readily available around here, but we didn't sort of get into that until quite recently, and uh, we've been getting our eggs most recently from Owen, actually. So people so sell, sell, at, people the, sell at, the, at the gate sort of thing? Yes, yes, yeah, yes, yeah. yes, yeah. Okay. Um, there's projects ongoing locally then? Yes, there are, yeah. So food and environment sort of food projects Food and environment, then. energy generation, there is some, I wish there were m was more. Mm. Um, we we don't have our own water. I wish we did. We we're sort of discussing whether Fran and us could um, actually afford to do a bigger borehole yes. between us. I don't. I don't think it will come off, but it, we wish it could. Yeah. Um, otherwise, so yeah. Because then there must have been a, a well here. There must have been. I was actually asking um, Jean Selby the other day if she could remember if there was one, and she couldn't. She didn't oh. think there was. Because you wonder yeah. where they would have. have got their water from yes but actually because when when was driver uh, how old is driver driver we think is um probably mid 19th century the main part of the house but there's a little there's a bothy next door which yes. was a cattle shed for a long time but it must have been lived in because there were two fireplaces in it okay. and it was thatched so maybe so that's earlier the site may be maybe yes. later but actually mm -hmm. sophie there's another thing to tell mm -hmm. you that um kit was doing some research into the water supply yes. for the area and he found that there used to be a pond out on the moor okay. which people were using for water Wow! at one stage whether it was actually a well I don't know but, but it was definitely but there a was communal some sort of communal supply there wow that's interesting yeah yeah and so that is dried up now I suppose so I don't know where it, we don't know exactly where it was and whether we could get it going again would be well it'd be great, interesting it? to find out wouldn't it yes it would yeah. you know there must be some people that may have a memory of it if, if, if yes if, if it existed yeah mm, interesting so going back then mm. to you know obviously as you said it, it's, it's fairly isolated and rural here mm. um, but what sort of activities go on locally that you know of or may get involved with well, there's quite a lot happening in our village hall. <laughs> <laughs> We've got actually we're between two village halls here. There's Finn and Grace has got yes, a there is, one, isn't there? And then there's Brinbarian. So we're kind of midway between the two. So it's sometimes difficult to know where we're at, where our loyalties lie. And they've both been refurbished recently. Yes, they, they have exactly. Yeah, yeah. That's right. Yes, yeah. So they've well, they've almost gained a new new lease of life, I suppose, in in some ways. Then locally, definitely they have. And and um, yeah, I think well before COVID actually. Um, I, I felt this great need to do something more to, mm. to kind of root myself here so there was luckily thanks to Sandra and yourself and mm. other people we got involved with raising money for the Brinbarian Village Hall mm. and, and Debbie Day, Debbie mm. Day Donnelly for example and a few other people mm. around here with sort of and you, you, well, you've, and you've been involved lots in the community garden there and you've been, yes, you've yes, been that's true. slowly yes. and but surely kind of putting together a fantastic bit of film in terms of the history of the old that's school and yeah, so on and, and other little documentary pieces as well yeah that's been really good fun I, I've enjoyed that so much um, and has that sort that of helped, helped your uh, feeling of, of getting to know the place and the people very and much so yes yeah. it has yeah it's been great 
and being behind a camera is much more comfortable than being in front of it. <laughs> but, yes, yeah. But yes, no, I love it because I'm quite nosy. And, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, it's, it's, I suppose it's a great way of, of finding out things. Um, and when you came here, obviously you said that obviously you've been travelling and kind of finding out about other cultures and so on. But was mm-hmm. it something that you were immediately interested in, in coming here to find out more about the history of the area? Yes, yes, I, I, I was. Um, and also about the house, because we didn't really know anything about it. And the people who lived here before gave us a copy of the film that you've got yes. about Droiva. Yes. So we had that to look at, and, and then that sort of sparked me to try and to go and ask a few people what they knew about the house and yes and Jean Selby was another person I talked to early early on mm. who was very helpful and friendly um, but I didn't do it in any, any particularly structured way and then I got fascinated with sheep farming in Romania and I tried to transfer that to here <laughs> so, yes. I, so I did some interviewing with Barry and Davis and yes. his, his relations in 2008 yes. and um, one or two other people but but there again, it's so different to Romania, and um, yes, it was. Yeah, I I felt more of an in- interloper here than I did there. Don't know why, but interesting. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, and did I suppose going on to that sort of farming and hill farming aspect, mm. um, was that you know immediately quite a, a strong identity that came across from this area? Yeah, very much so. Yes, and and then also partly because we we had this this thing going with a Romanian journalist who yes. was doing research into transhumans in Romania and, and then I invited him to come here because yeah. I thought well, why not yes. have some Welsh connections and he he kind of helped, he sort of spurred me on to get in touch with farmers further north and there's um, I'm trying to remember his name now God you'll know it he's a, he's, a, he's written books on on the farming community in mid Wales God what's his name Erwid Erwid. Okay, yeah, I. I, Pont, I he's from Pont Erwid. Yes. His name is Erwid. Yes. And he's a lovely guy, anyway. Ah. And um, <coughs> he he knew farmers up in the up above the Ellen Valley. In so the this is in the Cambria there. Mountains. Then. Yes, yes, exactly. Yes. And 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 for Dragos, we went up there to interview two separate farms up there. Interesting. And you actually took part in a gathering of one of their farms on the hills. Wow. Um, one of some September October. Time. Yes, and um, yeah, and then they they done this fantastic lunch for all the people who'd helped, and 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 that's they were much more isolated than here, and and yeah, it was just fantastic, and you just felt this wonderful community feeling, and it was it was really lovely people coming together to help each other to do do the same thing. Yes, yeah. I don't know whether that happens as much here anymore. Um, you know, when they go on the stra, when they go on the gather. Um, I haven't heard from mm. them, you know, as you say, because I know from other maybe upland communities, even in England, perhaps mm. other people not necessarily farming the land would also go and help with the gather because it was such a large area. Mm. Um, but I don't know whether that has been such a widely kind of participated in thing in Faselli as much as, say, Cambria Mountains or up in, well, you know, the, up in the Ruddy as well. No, I suppose after the big snow in 1947, when the sheep then started to go in to Castle Martin in the winter, mm. I think that maybe is that when it stopped? Perhaps, Possibly. perhaps it was. Yes, yeah. you may, you may be right. Yeah, because um, that has been, yeah, that's been a kind of a fairly recent, although you know a long time ago now, but fairly recent yes. change in that. Yes. And a more modern transhumans, really, isn't it? Yeah. But it's lovely that, that, that you know, the names, the place names in Wales, you have the summer farms, the Havods mm. are still there, mm. and the winter farms, the old mm. places, the Hendre. Hendre, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, because obviously there is still, well, there's a Havod on the mountain there, isn't there? Yes, there is. Um, but right. it's, well, it's, it's fairly shabbled now, but it, it's... Um, mm. I think a lot of us still go there, even though it's private property. Oh, yes, yeah, yeah no, everyone look, has yeah. a little look in there, I think. Yes. Um, no, it's it's quite a magic little place there on on the mountain, isn't yes, it? It is, yes, and that's yeah. in the film, the sixties film as well. Yes, because that's it? where Ivan Phillips. That's where he, well, he was born. I think so. I yes. think it was. Yes. So he was oh, yeah. the bailiff. Yes, yes. yes. Um, and interesting that even when he had showing showing the film crew around there. Uh, that it, it had obviously it hadn't been lived in then but it's such That's a right. small amount of time where he was there to that film it had, it had gone to nothing yes, you know yes 
Yeah. Quite sad actually, but it is. <coughs> um thinking about then more about um possibly the area's uh more ancient history, have you got interested in, in those sort of elements at all in terms of the archaeology, the the stones and so on? Yes, I I I'm I love learning about them. I'm ashamed to say I can't name them all along the top, but maybe you can see most of them from here. But I, I, I love going up there yeah. and looking at them. I used yes. to ride up there quite a bit, and it's a very mysterious and beautiful place up there because it is different from down here, even though it's not. I mean, we call them mountains, don't we? Yes. And they're very yes. small mountains, <laughs> but it is, it is a completely different world up there, and um, the stones add a great, a great element, not just sculptural, but their connections with people and what people use them for, I suppose, and of course they were quarried. Yes. But um, but thinking about whether how the stones got from that there to mm. Stonehenge and all of that stuff, yeah, it's absolutely fascinating. And the country Ivan, of course, and all the other. Yes. Definitely. Whatever they are. <laughs> well, it's that juxtaposition, structures. isn't it, between that? You know, you go out onto the mountain there, and it feels so wild. Yes. Yet it's littered with human occupation, isn't it? Yes, it is. Through. Yeah. Yeah you know yes, millennia, yes. Yeah, yeah and it was fascinating that one of the talks we went to I think it was Mike Arthur Pearson was saying that mm. they they discovered that the, the, the Priscilla's were heavily wooded but probably not since about 1400 BC or something I mean you know that That's we did it, have yeah. trees on the hills at one yeah, stage yeah there would have been but uh, yeah in an awful long time ago yeah um but all the, the mm. thought about looking over there from where I'm pointing to towards Karnalu and and um, and um, Driga and beyond mm. it, and all the people say there's evidence of little fields up there. Yes, right? I yeah. read that recently actually yeah. that around that Karnalu area there's yes. lots of yeah. lots of remnants yes. there. Um, yes. Yeah. Um, so you were saying that you used to go riding a lot up on the mountain yeah i did well not a lot but i used to go there once i had a horse for a long time mm. here and it was one of the nicest things to do was to go up there and just there must be something about going up there on horseback as well mm. yeah yeah yes but but thinking about the people living there and who who were they and what was it like for them and what kind of relationships did they have with each other and what were, were they speaking welsh i mean how far back are we going i don't know but well it, we don't know that <laughs> it could have been some sort of um mm. Brythonic or something then I suppose yes, or yes. you know yes and how continuous that habitation mm, was because mm. mm. obviously when you're over in Karnalu there what can you see from Karnalu because Karnalu can, isn't too far from here really no is it? you can see the sea from the top yes and you can see right straight to Karnalu that's it so there's almost three hill forts there isn't there yes. well Voldrigarn yeah Karnalu and then you can see right across that's right yes and I suppose it's well, you, when you look at that, you wonder how connected were they across the landscape, you know, I suppose. Yeah, exactly, yes. You know. Well, have you interviewed Vanya Orr? I haven't, but okay. she's well, gone away. She is the great authority of on course the, she is. the stones I'm and the away. Yeah. She knows she everything. Is. If I yeah. can manage to catch her when yeah. she's back, I will. Yes, yeah. Um, yeah. She's so enthusiastic about it all. Oh, yeah. gosh, yeah. She's, and she knows so much. Uh, mm. It's all, oh, I don't know how she stores it all. No. Um, so if you do you like to go walk up on a mountain, I presume that you do. I do, but I actually don't do it all that often. Mm. But it's it's lovely to know it's there. Yes, and yes. Um, but if you do, where do you like to go walking? Um, well, several different routes that I that I take. Um, there's actually one almost straight up from here up to Khan Khoidog, which you can see almost straight yes. outside our house. And I don't know if that was a pathway at one stage, but it's very sort of it sort of attracts you to go straight up. Um, or or I can go, uh, we go around by the Havod and up that way. Yes. Or you can go over to Carnalo and up that way. Those mm. are the sort of three main routes that I take. And anywhere else locally around the Priscelli that you often like to maybe go for a little jaunt to? Well, I, I, I love it around Voldregan. That's great. And on the other side down towards um, Kremig is, is lovely too. And, mm. and um, yeah, anywhere to... to, to I, where, when I, where I haven't very... Very, been very often is is in fact up to the top of Crum Kevin. Um, it's a bit of a pull up there. It's though. a huge <laughs> pull up there. It's really really stretches your muscles going mm. up there. But I'd like to go over the top and down the other side towards Rosebush and that side and see yes. what I could find down there. But it's yeah. all there. I just have to do it. You know, so. Well, it's 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 not a big area, but then to explore it, it is. There's lots of bits 
to it, isn't there? Yes, there are lots yeah, of bits, yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, and does the area get a lot of people coming to visit often, especially for the archaeology? I, I think so, yes. I mean, I don't, we don't get a huge amount of visitors here. <laughs> not many come in, because there is a, a path through yes. there, is there? Yes, there is, yes. But yes. not many yes. people come and I, I don't notice way. hordes. I mean, no. there are some, but mm. um, I think, you know, I think more of them go down to where Julie and Tez are down by, um, what's it called? Oh, yeah, Craigrossavellian. Yes, Craigrossavellian, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yes. yeah. yeah, more people, well, I suppose. It's closer, to, easier to get to. Yes. Um, and they, they've, because, uh, well, yes, easy to get to in terms of, you know, if you were going to see one of the other quarries, perhaps, or yes, refu exactly. reputed quarries, yeah, you've yeah. got to go all the way up onto the hill normally, haven't you? Yeah, Whereas right, there yeah. you can kind of just pop in. Yes, um, exactly, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, interesting. Um, Are you aware of some of the myths and legends that might be sort of a, a associated with the area? Have you looked into those? <laughs> yes, I have. I'm, I'm very bad at remembering names and, and, and about legends very much, but um, I, I know something about the Crown of Maybe on Owen, the, the history of that that group. Yes. And um, and, and the so-called Golden Way along the mm. top of the Pacellis and um, talking to Vanya, you get so much of it, and all about the hunt. Um, the mythology, the map, yeah. The map from Marvin Orleon, and yes. I tried to read bits of that, and mm. yeah, I'm aware it's there, but um, yeah. don't don't examine me on it. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. But you've got an awareness of the th that some of these stories yes. exist. Yes, I have, and also the fascinating connection with Ireland because this part of Wales was part of Ireland for a while, mm. or at least part of South West Ireland. I'm not mm. quite sure when and how long it lasted for, but that interests me too. Interesting. Yeah. Yes, because the yeah. the one story in the Mabinogion with the Turk Truith. Yes. He was supposed to be a, um, a an Irish king, wasn't he? He was. Wasn't he? Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. So um, there are links yeah. there across yeah. the sea. Um, so have you got a local heritage site that you feel is your favourite in the area? I know there's so many of them. There are so many, yes, yeah. I don't know about a favourite. Um, a lot of it's to do with where I can, whether I can take dog for a walk or not, because I tend to always want to have him with me. If I can yes. Do it. Yes. So feel right going out without a dog somehow. No. But um, I don't know. Does Conrad count? <laughs> Cause well, it does. It's a well, yes. It, it, it's a hill wonderful. fort, and it's yeah. Uh, is there a is there a, 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 a figure in the stones there? Oh, I, it's something. There could well be. I mean, there's one. There's a Bressed looks very much like a figure. Of, of is there? Sometimes it, people say it looks like a witch, on ah. it, depending on which angle you see it from. But, but I think in Carnally you can read all sorts of faces into the stone. I, I see. Um, yeah, because someone has mentioned to me before that there's almost the outline of a woman there. Right. And there's very definitely yeah. one from a certain angle on on Canning Glee as well. Right. Yeah. 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 It's just interesting to hear people's in interpretations. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So I know that um you're very passionate about um the sort of oh local no. biodiversity and so on. Yes. Um yes. how much do you know about the plants and animals that live on these uplands? Yeah, I'm aware that there's a special kind of dam damselfly here, is it the electric blue? And so then dumps the flag. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think it. I think uh, it's that anyway. Yes, and there's a there's a um, is there a wild oyster in the streams? Is it or is it a mussel? Some there's some kind of mollusks that used to grow here anyway. Oh. But um, all of this I got from a very lovely survey that the pup put out about ten years ago or more, and everybody living here got a copy of it. And I've got it somewhere. Wow, I don't. I didn't all these things. Didn't know about the yeah the the oyster yeah. and the mollusk or whatever. Yeah. It's a new one. Something like that. Um, but apart from that, I'm woefully ignorant, Sophie, about it. I know it's I'm lovely. No? I'm sure that you and know I'm more like more than the average person, Caroline. Well, I love looking at it. Yeah, so, and, um, yeah, yeah. 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 That's, uh, so do you 
do much foraging at all locally. <laughs> I, I ask this question and people say no, but then I say, will you go out and pick blackberries? And they all say yes. Oh, good. That's great. <laughs> yeah, no, we do th as well. Definitely blackberries. Yeah. Yeah. And thanks to Emma Biddle down the road, the wife of Emma, Emma yes. Jones, I've, I've been much more aware of the benefits of nettles. <sighs> nettles. And goose grass. Yes. Um, all of which we have in abundance here. <laughs> yes. You do and what do you do with those? Um, make them into tea or um, just goose grass. I've just been crushing it up youngest shoots in in a glass of water and drinking that after an hour or two like cle cleavers then like yeah. or, or sticky sticky willy sticky, yes, yes right yes yes yeah and what is the benefit of, of that i just feel it's very refreshing oh, really yeah interesting yep um anything else that you um, that you've used from the hedgerows pennywort oh yes yes That's good when it's very young to use in salads then um, I haven't actually used it. I just eat it from the just eat edges. It. <laughs> and um, what else? <coughs> slows? Yeah, not so much slows, but I did go through a phase of making um, kind of ketchup from whores. Oh, oh yes, how did that turn out? Well, very well, except it's a hell of a job to get, they're such tiny berries and they've got quite big stones, so it takes ages to get the flesh off them. So you've got to, how, what, how do you prepare them then? <coughs> I boiled them up and then t and and crushed them, mashed them through a sieve, and then kept yeah. the flesh. And then I forget how much if I added what I, what I added to them. Ah. I had that for a few years, and then I mean things in the garden like like crab apples, crab apple jelly. Yes. Um, other things, well, sorrel. We have sorrel in the garden too, mm. but you can have you can eat wild sorrel. I think. Um, what else? Yeah. So what is the what's the state of of stay with me. Come down. What is the what's the state of biodiversity like locally here? What what what's the condition of it? Well, I would say, um, listening to other people who do know better than I do, that it's in terms of the whole UK as a whole, it's pretty good, but an awful lot has been lost. Mm. Um, and since I've moved here probably a lot has been lost and there's there's a great deal of controversy about spraying and you know things that farmers feed their animals that go into the water yes yes and damage the plants and yes that is a huge huge debate argument row whatever you like to call it that we have to resolve somehow mm. but we need to do it as in as friendly a way as we mm. possibly can okay um so you were mentioning earlier that there are projects ongoing for some of this, yeah. um, and there is a there is a there is a, there is a group locally as well that has been holding talks and so on. Can yes, you talk a little bit yes, about that? yes, biodiversity promotion. I think we're calling it. Yes, now. Um, I, I I got involved at the beginning and and went along a few times, and then lately I haven't been going so often. But one of the big things that they were doing was to set up a wildlife corridor from uh, Tikanal Woods to Pengetty Woods. Mm. And which involved getting permission from lots of different landowners, mm. which I gather, thanks to the people who were helping from Heremon, was went really well. Some very energetic people came in and helped get that off the ground. I don't actually know what's happened with that now, the, what the actual final status of that is, but there was money available to plant trees, I think. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and help with fencing to keep livestock off new trees yeah, and hedgerows yeah. and things like that and so that was great um there was a bit of a controversy towards about the burning of the mountain mm. which has been happening every year mm. for a long time whether mm. that's a good thing or not very interesting to know what research is being done into that mm. whole issue so that's something that happens on the year on, on the mountain every year it usually. has been except for this year when it's okay it was too wet it was too wet yes. for them to burn anyway yeah um, and how is that received locally? It depends who you talk to. It's it's a it's yeah. a mixed bag. It's a it? really mixed bag. Yes, mm. um, it has divided us in a quite terrifying way. Actually, particularly last year, it was it got things got very nasty, mm. um, which mm. was which was really sad. But there again, I hope we work through it, and with luck, it'll lead to greater understanding in the future, which is what we really need. And yes. the biodiversity group is all for that. We do not want to make enemies of anybody. No, no, no. It's that's not what it's about. But it's also, yeah, they brought people in to talk about wildlife 
to like him and so, so it's opened up to the it? conversations then yes yeah it's been really interesting really worthwhile good good um So, during your time here, you obviously said that there ha has been certain maybe agricultural practices that may have changed while you were here that have, have kind of um, become more intensive and so on. Um, but through talking to maybe, you know, you've been interviewing lots of people and talking to local people, mm -hmm. um, how do you feel that that's changed from since their time? Do you know much about that? And obviously, since you know you, can, you, you yeah. you've been doing work on the on the transhumans with I have. Yes. I mean, I can only talk about very specific yes. people that I've spoken to. Mm. One of whom, obviously, is Bailey and Davis mm. and, and his wife, mm. Kenos, um, who are very you know they gave me lovely interviews in two thousand and eight. Mm. And as I said at the time, I was doing this really in order to sh sort of compare with Romania, mm. and then I began to get more interested perhaps in, in the sort of impact of traditional agricultural methods on our <laughs> on our earth and food mm -hmm. and began to see perhaps you know some of the bad things or the less good things that farmers yes. around here do and, yes. and regrettable let's say mm. and and were worried about that a lot um, and I met somebody who has been doing work with uh, the farming community from the point of view of trying to help farmers who are stressed. Um, yes. This is Selina. Uh, I know. Yeah. 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 Um, and she came here a couple of years ago and we talked about making a film together, in fact. But she was seeing it from her farming background she is Welsh and you know, she is a farmer herself and gave me a lot of information that helped me to see it from the other side in terms of farmers getting locked into debt yes and 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 how incredibly stressful that is and how very hard it is to get out of that cycle mm. so uh, you know I, but you know f we see farmers with gigantic machinery Mm -hmm. and wondering why they need to have such gigantic tractors when you know we're not in prairie country here so I mean there's that kind of aspect of things yes. that you wonder about and then there's all the things about slurry and slurry going into the into the water supply yeah, yeah. and poisoning things and you know it's all it's all a difficulty and it all depends on how people see their livelihood and how they see their future and the future of the land and 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 we can so quickly become polarized into yes you know the sort of the passion, difficult conversations it's very they? very difficult conversations but we really need to have them mm. and they're uncomfortable for many reasons for people aren't they you yes because yes. they kind of got to address their own behaviors all of us in some way absolutely yeah you know yeah I mean, um, yeah so do you think that's something yeah. that's uh are more people locally thinking and asking these questions or is it still quite closed i think some people are definitely more you see some of this perhaps comes through social media because i sort of become a bit of a social media junkie and i get a lot of information yes. from facebook and instagram and things yeah. and people are having these conversations perhaps only with themselves and not with anybody else so i'm i don't know how much i'm really seeing of what's actually going on but I I I fear that people, let's say, like me, who mm. feel that they are on the side of the sort of Greenpeace, Friends of the Earth, want to save everything, don't mm. want factory farming, for example, and mm. are against that sort of thing. Are see I'm afraid that we're seen as, as sort of, you know, antagonistic to farmers, which is not what we want at all to be but it is yeah I mean I still feel that there is an awful long way to go before I could sit down with Berrien for example and have the conversation I would love to have with him mm. about 
what is really good for us all and how yes. can we make things better yes and and for him not to feel he's being got at because i think i'm not saying him specifically but, no but, the farmers, but farmers feel farmers that feel, yes yeah yeah, yeah. it's a it's a it's an awkward and uncomfortable space isn't it to to have to to think about but thinking about you know yeah, moving think, on to yeah, the to yeah. the to the challenges to this area mm. moving forward what yeah, what do you think yeah. those could be you know well i think what's happening in Hermon, uh, for example i think is a huge beacon of hope you know the the, mm. the um, resilience group people who are growing their own food and i'm sure it's possible to feed a lot more people by 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 getting into local agriculture local small agricultural projects and, and mountain hall farm for example which is where we're getting our milk from now they yes. do their own meat as well um, so there's so there's lots of local food initiatives there happening. are there are i mean it's you know people say it's going never going to be enough to feed the whole population but i think we could do an awful lot more than we are doing mm. to save to save the planet let's say from having to import food from lots of other places because i think britain as a whole could produce an awful lot more of its own food we we export a lot of our food from from here you know there's obviously a lot of farmers here but do they do we see that produce? I don't know. Mm. Do you know? I don't know the true answer. No, no. I don't know. I'm, as, I'm yeah. sort of just yeah. kind of putting it out there. Really. Yes, yes. You it's know, we live in a, a very question. rural area. You know, you'd think that we'd be producing lo loads of our local food. Well, and yes. I mean, talking about the sheep farmers, I mean, mm. if, if, if they've got like a 4,000 strong flock, they must be, ex I mean, where is that going? I don't know where the, the lambs mm. are going. But how, how, you know, going back to perhaps uh, food habits and so on, obviously you said yeah. you, know, you still still eat meat locally and so on, yes. but how many people, um, uh, you know, eat lamb, considering that's our, our main crop here almost? Well, quite. Know? Well, we hardly ever eat lamb. Mm. Um, I don't know. Yeah, good question. Very I don't question. know if people, yeah. you know, is it is it because... You know, I'm asking personally. You know, is it because you don't like eating it? Or no, is it I love it. Unfortunately, I mean, I th I feel I, you know, it's a yeah. brutal thing because actually I'd hate the you know the whole thing about farming and killing animals is is like. <laughs> it's a, it's <laughs> it's a difficult just, conversation for it's you. It's totally yeah. difficult. I mean, if I even kill a an insect these days, I go ah! <laughs> if I kill this insect, yeah, you know, but yeah. it's ridiculous. It's paranoid. It's it's way beyond what one can actually live. You can't live like that. I mean. You have to eat. I mean, we, we, we are eating a lot more vegetables than we used to and pulses instead of meat, but we still are eating meat quite mm. a lot. And um, yeah, I'm sure yeah. of it. The conversations yeah. I've yeah. been having recently, apparently everyone would have um, a pig of their own. Yeah. And, but only they would share out them. They'd kill one pig for one month and then maybe six weeks later they the, the neighbor would do it because they didn't have any way to store all this food but they share it out then as neighbors and then the next good heavens they would do it that way how far back does this go do you not know? that far really in the, uh, you yeah. know it, as in it's since the second world war do you think or uh, yeah like it, it was happening probably in the uh 40s 50s 60s even right you know yeah. up until probably people yeah. had more freezer room and so on <laughs> Such a beautiful place to live, but you know, really, mm. what what do you love most about it? You know, what 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 makes what makes it the best place to live? Um, the peace and quiet, the people, the space, mm. the fresh air, mm. the ability to grow your own food. Yes, and the sea is very close, but it's, but it is a community thing. I mean, I think that the you know having such really good, caring people mm. around us, we have a lot. And so there. <laughs> Fine, yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, it's hard getting to places. I mean, we've only got one car, and the, you know, the, the public transport aspect of it is really hard. And the older we get, the more of a problem that's likely to get. Mm. But um, apart from that, it's great. Yeah. <laughs> is there anything else that we've we we maybe haven't? We've spoken about quite a few things actually, and possibly quite mm. quite a few. Um, yeah, quite deep, maybe reflections on an yeah. on an area which is interesting because sometimes people don't want to reflect maybe that uh, truthfully about an area you know 
um, yeah, is there anything that maybe we haven't haven't spoken about? Well, that that we haven't talked about. Yeah, I suppose. Well, a lot that's that's there's a lot happening about the Welsh language at the moment, and I've I've been doing a little bit of um, a sort of voluntary work online with Ukrainian schools over the last year, actually, on mm-hmm. and off, and. Um, there's always an opportunity in in those sessions to talk about your where you where you live because they like to know about where the volunteers live and mm. and I've I've made a couple of films for the Ukrainian teachers and children and telling them about Wales and telling them about the Welsh language and they always ask how many s- people speak Welsh in Wales and yes. I had to do some research yes. and I found out that it's something between twenty and twenty three percent at the moment I think and there is a government initiative happening, the Welsh Government Initiative, to promote the language a lot, isn't that's right, and, yes, yes. and we're having classes again locally, which is great, yes. and I, start, I started learning Welsh sooner after I moved here, and I've <laughs> been picking it up ever since. I don't speak it a lot at home, but I think about the language, it's incredibly important, because it's a huge, I mean, it's, it's great to learn a language, because it gives you a completely different window on a culture, which, which I personally love. And I would really hate to see Welsh die, and I don't know how it's going to survive if it's not used in everyday life more than it's it is now. Mm. Because if it's only us old people who want to learn Welsh, it's not going to be very good. Mm. But um, I I think it's it is a big issue, and um, I, you know I want to support it as much as I can. But I and uh, but and also the other issue is another issue is. As, as you know, really, is, is housing and affordable housing mm. around yeah. here. Which perhaps contributes towards the former point, really. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's linked. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't I don't know where the legislation is going to go in Wales about, mm. you know, second homes and trying to encourage local... I mean, not to give local people who speak Welsh the opportunity to stay here if they want to, because, I mean, the affordable, so-called affordable housing that I know of around here isn't really affordable at all. No, no, and perhaps uh, some of it actually isn't in those areas where, um, you know, I, I was speaking to somebody earlier today and yeah. this area maybe would have been considered a stronghold years ago, yeah. but now actually I- it's not, uh, mm. it, it's, it's you know, the, the yeah. percentage has increased so much that it's actually just maybe known as um, an area where Welsh was traditionally spoken yeah. you know it's just yeah. cha- the terminology has changed yes but perhaps those opportunities for affordable housing don't exist in those areas because no. they are by it's n- by their nature far more rural and less less houses and dwellings available really. yes i would really love to see some kind of initiative in brimbarian or, or crossville or somewhere that, that actually did just a nucleus of maybe you know even one house that was mm. kept specifically for Less less well off young well, people. Yes. You know, I don't know how it would work. No, 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 no. But just to give a sort of foothold for somebody. Yes. To well to enable you know because, as you said, perhaps um, uh, you know the the have you noticed that the the areas the demographic has changed. I have that. I have definitely noticed that. Yes. 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 Yeah. Um, so maybe Definitely. you know, there's less families here then. I know that yes. we obviously haven't got a. A school in Brimberian or Crosswell, but um, mm. there is one in Eglusuru, isn't there? That's right, there is. Yes, a good school. Yes, yes, yes a good school with Welsh. Yep. Um, Welsh speaking, yeah. And you know, I'm sure that that probably is having an effect slowly. Maybe yeah. less children. I don't. Yeah. I don't know the. The figures of it. No, I mean all of these things always go in waves, and I just actually finished reading a really great book by a historian called Martin. Jones, do you know him? Martin Johns. Johns, yes. 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 And I just love it. Is mm. what is it called? Is is Wales England's colony or something yes. like that? He's yeah. an interesting person, isn't he? Very interesting, yes. Mm. Very well balanced, very mm. nuanced. Mm. And I learnt several things that I didn't know before about the history of the demographics in Wales going way, way back and So he moved I- his family moved to Hermon. Um, and uh, mm-hmm. he went to a school had him on, but his family, this is what it says, were English hippies basically. Right. But he, he learned Welsh in a school had him on. And uh, yes, he's he's sort of, well, he's a lecturer now, I think, in Swansea and yes. so on. And 
uh, has these very interesting conversations about um, Wales and yes. the Welsh language belonging to us all and yes. so on. Yes, exactly. He, he's yeah. A, he's a, yeah, interesting chap. Um, yeah. Is there anything else you'd like to yeah. add, Caroline? No, I mean, I'd love to go on talking about this sort of thing forever, but I think you need to go home properly or, or not. No, we, you know, we're you having a lovely conversation, but I, yes, don't, I don't, want to, yeah. don't want to take all of your time no, up. No, no, it's fine. Great. Well, um, we'll close the interview there then. OK. Thank you ever so much, Caroline. Jochen It's been a huge forever. Pleasure. <laughs> Sorry, Jochen <laughs> 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 <laughs>